Anna Karenina, part one. Winter 1873. Everything was in confusion in Nablonsky's house. Dolly Ablonska, the wife of Prince Stefan Ablonsky, known as Stiva, had discovered that her husband had an affair with a French girl who had been a governess in their family, and Dolly is threatening to leave him. Stiva is not in love with Dolly anymore, though she is the mother of their five kids. They both were waiting for Stiva's sister, Anna Karenina, to come from St. Petersburg to visit them and maybe smooth things over between Stiva and Dolly. Though Stiva is upset with his family troubles, he is still happy to have a dinner with his old friend, Konstantin Levin, who comes to Moscow from his country estate with the intention of proposing to Dolly's 18-year-old sister, Princess Katerina Sherbatska, known as Kitty. However, Stiva tells Levin that Levin has a rival for Kitty's affection, Count Alexei Vronsky, a young, rich and handsome military officer. Kitty is more interested in Vronsky, and indeed, when Levin proposes to Kitty, she rejects him, in the hopes that Vronsky will make her proposal soon. When the next morning Stiva goes to the railway station to meet his sister, Anna Karenina, he runs into Vronsky, who is waiting for his mother to get off the same train. Vronsky at once is charmed by Anna. Before they leave the station, a railroad guard is run over and killed by a passing train. Anna ably convinces Dolly not to leave Stiva. At a ball next night, Kitty notices that Vronsky is distracted and inattentive to her. The source of his inattention is Anna. Kitty realizes that her hopes are short. Vronsky never wanted to marry her. Anna leaves Moscow in the train for St. Petersburg. During a brief stop, Vronsky emerges on the platform and tells her that he is in love with her and will follow her to St. Petersburg. Anna claims that this is impossible. Devastated by Kitty's rejection, Levin retires to his country estate. Before leaving Moscow, Levin goes to see his elder brother Nikolai, who is even sickler than Levin remembers and lives in depraved conditions. Disgusted with the entire trip, Levin leaves Moscow. Levin feels much better when he returns home to the countryside and the natural world. In St. Petersburg, Anna tries to resume her life, but she is constantly displeased with everything, especially with her husband, Alexei Karenin, whom she never really loved. Also, the fact that they have a kid, 8-year-old boy Sereja, doesn't help Anna to stop thinking about Vronsky. In St. Petersburg, Vronsky and Anna's affair is becoming common knowledge. Petersburg society is waiting eagerly for Anna's downfall and Vronsky's family is becoming concerned that this affair is distracting him from progressing in his career. Karenin is concerned with external appearances and it is for this reason that he confronts Anna. Vronsky is preparing to ride in a horse race. Right before the race, Vronsky visits Anna, she tells him that she is pregnant and he begs her to leave Karenin. Anna and Karenin both attend the race. Vronsky's horse falls and breaks her back, and Karenin watches as Anna reacts physically when Vronsky falls. He takes her home immediately. Afterwards, he confronts her about her affair. Anna confesses her feelings for Vronsky and says that she hates Karenin. Karenin asks her to end it before it causes any more scandals. Karenin wants to keep up his reputation in society. He decides that the best punishment for Anna is to refuse her request for a divorce and to forbid her from seeing Vronsky anymore. Otherwise, Anna will never see her son Sereja. Anna is shocked and furious. Vronsky also has to make a difficult choice between Anna and his career. After giving birth to Vronsky's daughter, Anna lies close to death and begs Karenin his forgiveness. Karenin forgives both Anna and Vronsky and decides not to leave Anna. Vronsky is in despair. He attempts to shoot himself, but ends up wounding without killing himself. Even when Anna doesn't die, Karenin still accepts her daughter as legally his own and feels uplifted with spiritual joy at his forgiveness. But still, Anna feels stifled. Stiva suggests to Karenin to grant Anna a divorce, and Karenin concedes that this is the best solution. Bronsky abandons his military duties and together with Anna they leave for Italy without accepting Karenin's offer of divorce. <laughs>